now it's time for Pound for Pound ATL. Welcome to the show today, baby. This is your boy Jimbo Dean, a.k.a. Jimbo Slice, a.k.a. Jimmy Obama. And you can call me any one of those you want. But please don't call me no damn New Orleans Saints fan. This is Pound for Pound ATL, and we are back to give y'all some of that good Atlanta Falcon content because game time is around the corner. And you better be getting ready, and you better be getting fired up, baby. Hey, mm -hmm. don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to JR. Shout out to Toby D. We back another week. That's my boy Big Mike over there in Atlanta, ground zero, hanging out, kicking it free. I mean, whatever y'all I mean, Pile in, big dog. You over there, Pile in. What's going yes, on, sir. man? What's going on? It's yes, almost sir. game time. It's almost game time. It's almost game time. And as always, I, I get always excited to talk to the Pound for Pound family this week because, yes, you know, sir. it's been a long off season. Been a, been a long off season. You know, we've we've had to deal with a lot this year. You know, we got Like I said, we got a new backfield. I mean, you know, COVID. I mean, it, why is Dan Quinn still our head coach? So many questions. <laughs> and it's off season. Our about to get the you know about to get put to rest a little bit you know we're about to get ready to strap it up and i think you know we can talk we can ramble on talk about what the falcons could do and may do all we want but the best thing is about to happen these boys are actually about to go do it and we're about to see jet jones you know fly out the runway real soon and i'm excited about that man so but you know hey this week man you know hey it's not as an exciting week it's exciting for us as fans May not be exciting for a few of the Falcons, or at least the guys that are Falcons as of tonight, because uh, you know we got cuts coming. We got you know we got a lot of you know like I said, there's a lot going on around the league and stuff like that. NFC South got a, I don't know if you guys noticed or not. NFC South got a little bit bigger this week at the running yes, back position. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. With with Leonard Fournette, right? So you know I think that um, as always, we got a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. You know, Big Jimbo. Talk to him, man, you know, because we got cuts coming, man. So, you know, tell me how you're feeling, man. What, I mean, what, what, what I you mean, feeling about these cuts, man? Unfortunately, this time of the year is not my favorite time of the year because I like to follow every player on the Atlanta Falcons, undrafted free agents, free agents, and rookies. I like to follow them all, and I do have my favorite, and I don't have my favorite. But, unfortunately, this is part of the business, the Atlanta Falcons fans, Pound Pound ATL family, and some people just got to hit the dough. Now, I mean – you, you got 80 players on the roster, right? Okay, we got to we got to bust it down to 53 players on the roster. I mean, I I wanted that number to go from 53 to like 56, maybe 59, but they stuck at 53. It's all cool. Uh, we had our last scrimmage this Wednesday, final scrimmage, man. And Dan Quinn came out and said, "Look, we're looking at these scrimmages and these game these uh, practices like games because we had no preseason. So you kind of got to look that out. I said that before." Since we ain't got no preseason game, the practices and all these scrimmages and stuff, yeah. it's pretty much game film. You got to be able to put some film out there. You got to be able to try to secure yourself a job. So, I mean, 16 additional spots on that practice squad, practice squad uh, roster is going to be very nice. It's going to be beautiful because it, it, it's, it's going to be something that we can rely on and just have somebody in the pocket, have somebody ready to go. And, and, and this could be somebody that a player on the bubble that, we was on the line with and we don't want to let go now if they decide to stay with us and be on our practice squad that's kind of solely up to them but if it's a good player that got that potential that dan quinn and and, and tom dimitroff is is looking for rich mccain i'm looking for slide him over down that practice squad and hopefully next year we have a preseason he can get the shine he can make the team and make him make some noise for us in the future but like i said man like this show is all about it's about these these final cuts man the game is not that far away and it's just something that have, has to have happen, and due to COVID nineteen, I'm, I'm just hoping we don't miss out on no players that that is really good and they go somewhere else and be even better. Now, with this COVID nineteen, the NFL PA also approve an extra six man veteran spot roster, where, where veterans six veterans can be cocked and ready to go. So I'm I'm good that the due to COVID nineteen they got that. So they got they got they that they have six veterans just posted ready to go spots open in case somebody go down with it you can slide them in no foul no harm no foul and that and that's okay but like i said man dan quinn i've been looking at these these practices and these scrimmages like they was games and 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 i really hope we don't make a mistake or let nobody go now let's go down this list mike let's go almost position position because some positions is self-explanatory right pound pound atl out there all my all the atlanta Falcon fans out there we know that certain positions, me and Mike know 
JR told me, all of us know Atlanta Falcons uh, YouTube content creators out there, they know some of these positions is concrete. We know it's, it's just not, it's not going to change. Really ain't no problem. But I want y'all to do this out there, Pine Pine ATL. I want y'all to put in the comments of the players you know or feel that's on the bubble you don't want to let go. Because I'm going to tell you just like this. Do not be shocked. Do not be surprised that one of your favorite players you thought was going to make the roster is, is uh, going to be cut here. Uh, what, Saturday 4 p.m. is the deadline, Mike? That's right. Saturday yeah, 4 so p.m. Yeah. Saturday 4 p.m. State that Tune in. If, if one of your favorite players you thought was going to be on the team don't make it, do not be shocked because this lo this roster is loaded. And some good guys could hit the dough like they never did before. That's right. I bust the rhyme for y'all just then. Holla at your boy. Let's start in this quarterback room, right? So I'm gonna do this, Mike. I'm just gonna name the mainstay. We some of these we're not gonna touch for that long because we know quarterback room. Matt Ryan, Matt Shaw. Think Atlanta Falcons only gonna carry two quarterbacks. Now, on the bubble, we got Kurt Ben Curtin and we got Kyle Lyle Little. Okay, just signed Lyle Little from the Giants. I don't know how that's working. I don't know what KB doing over there, but I mean Matt Ryan, Matt Shaw, need say mo. Anything you gotta put on that, Mike. Anything about that room you wanna put in on that. No, no, I, I think I think what it says is that uh, Kurt Banker may have taken a slight step back, you know, just because they might have put a lot letter there to, you know, just make sure keep him honest, you know, because he might have gotten comfortable. Like, you know what? Matt Schaub's probably a little bit better than me right now. He knows what to do. He, you know, he knows what the team expects of him. So I just kind of coast a little bit. So Dan Quinn, offensive coordinator, Dirk Cuddy probably said, hey, you know, let's get this guy a little bit of competition just to see if he wants the job. But I think. He has practice squad written all over him, but now, let's, now, but let's be honest now. Kurt Binkert is actually a guy that I think he's put enough on film already. He got hurt last year, but I think he's had strong preseason the last couple of couple of seasons, right? But the thing about Kurt Binkert is that um, there's a team that's really quarterback hungry. You know, let's say you know Fitzpatrick got hurt or somebody like that, or just somewhere like that. I just think the Dolphins would snatch a guy up like that and just put him on, you know, as a backup to Tua or just somebody like that, you know. So. If he's a guy that potentially gets waived, he is a guy that we may not have the luxury of keeping on the practice squad, right? So nothing really to see there. Matt Schaub is your backup guy. We hope the godfather, Matt Ryan, shout out to the godfather, Matt Ryan, stays okay. healthy. And the quarterback position is kind of what it is, man. It's kind of, you know, business as usual, man. Business as usual. Let's run to this, jump over to the running back group. And what a group it is. And no, we don't need nobody else out there. How let me? That's how I feel. We don't need nobody else. I think this group is, is that what is, is that was that? So when y'all came out, when Little Fournette got cut by the Jags or waved or whatever, and y'all like, oh, whoa, 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 calm down. We are all right. And I put out a tweet saying, I hope Tar Girl, I hope Little Fournette do as good for the books as Tar Girl is going to do for us because we're ready to go pound for pound, punch for punch, fight fist for fist. Whatever y'all want to do, let's do it because you know you got to build your team to beat these dirty birds. So, hey, you got your boy, you got you got McCaffrey over there with the, with the Panther. Uh, so so Kamara with the Saints. We don't know what's going on with that situation, but good for them. How let me? I mean, you got Leonard Fournette down there, and LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy is also with the Buccaneers, if y'all didn't know. That's one of another running back we got to face. And then you got Mr. Tar Gurley himself, and then we got Brian Hill, Edo Smith. All right, running back group Tar Gurley, Edo Smith, Brian Hill, Quadre Allison, Keith Smith. They got Keith Smith later at a running back for some reason on here. I don't know why, but anyways, it's going to be our fullback. Long right, shot right. on the bubble. Your boy, Mike, Mikey Daniels, and, mm. and, and Craig Reynolds. Those are, your, those are your bubbles right there. Give me your take on that running back group, big dog. It, it really ain't right, too right. much. That's almost self-explanatory as well. I was, I was about to say, three, three seconds on uh, Craig Reynolds. Uh, thank you for your service. Three seconds. All right. Now, oh, to, yeah. <laughs> to the other <laughs> running back, Mikey Daniels. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Mikey Daniels is a running back that – Again, he kind of he's kind of like Kurt Binker. You know, we might think, you know, if Mikey Daniel doesn't make the team, which I, you know, I believe on a lot of other teams, he could be a shoe in for that third running back position because everything we've heard about Mikey Daniel has been positive. We talked about Mikey Daniels four or five months ago. The first time I saw his film, I was like, this guy is, hey, you could really put him at fullback, you could put him at halfback, he could play it all. But I think Mikey, Mikey Daniels, just because Brian Hill did what um, a lot of people did, wasn't, they weren't necessarily sure he could do which was take hold of the number two position. I think if, you know, you would have had to be under a rock to not know that Brian Hill has had one of the best training camps of any Falcon and he's taken that leap and that he is actually going to be a strength in our backfield. But again, we're not here to touch on, we're not going to strategize overly on 
what Brian Hill is going to look like in a Falcons uniform. Next week, we will. But this week, again, Mikey Daniels, I hope that we can uh, keep you on the practice squad. Um, and again, hey, you never know. Depending on the personnel, we might can sneak Mikey Daniels on that uh, active roster as the special teams player and maybe get a still a care. You know? I'll agree. I'll agree. Okay, yeah, uh, that, that that quick three New York second you just put out on, on Craig Reynolds. Hey, man, thank you very much. Uh, it, 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 no big deal, man. Get that you haul ready. Anyways, wide receiver group, almost a, a mainstay. I mean, you got the Jet Jones ready to take off like Mike said. And what a beautiful thing it's going to see. Uh, it's going to be to see the Jet Jones get at it one more game, one more year with the Atlanta Falcons. A, a stand-up guy, a stand-up player, a, pil- a pillar in this Atlanta Falcons organization. One of the, the, the one of the model citizens of the NFL. We ain't got no problems, okay? We got Kevin Ridley. We got Russell Gage. Olamide Sakias. What's going on now? On the bubble, they got we 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 think we're gonna be on the bubble. We got Brandon Powell and Christian Blake. Good God, don't put Christian Blake on that bubble. Holler at me now. But anyway, Chris Rowland for what? I don't know why, but he might be on that bubble. So the Atlanta Fox want to carry seven wide receivers. And Mike, you said that kind of. You alluded to that kind of in the last show. Don't be surprised if we carry seven wide receivers and look like they want to carry seven. Okay, as a long shot, man. Good God Almighty, uh, Laquan Treadwell. I know you want to touch bases on, bases on him, Big Mike. And, man, I really thought that signing was going to turn out to be a beautiful thing. But it's seeing it starting like it's going downhill, like a, 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 what is it, a, a ice cream on a, a, on a top of a mountain. It's starting to roll down pretty fast. Got mm-hmm. Devin, got Devin Gray, Devin Gray uh, Jawan Green, and, and, and Jalen McCleskey uh, out of uh, Tulane. Uh, we want our undrafted free agents. I thought he could at least make the special teams, but it, it's not looking too good for. Him. Give me your idea. Give me give me your uh, thoughts on this wide uh, receiver group, man. What you what you thinking? You, you know your your bubble guys, your your guy that probably gonna be cut. Give me give me give me your, give me your thoughts, Mike. So we'll, we'll, we'll start. I, look, I start with the elephant in the room, and this is one case where I tell you this: the elephant in the room is actually the smallest guy in the room. Elephant in the room is Chris Rowland. Chris Rowland is going to make this team because Chris wow. Rowland hasn't done anything not to make this team. And I think a lot of times you may stick with production over potential. But this is one case with a guy you put on his tape and he is, like I said, he is, this is where you go with potential over production. And I think that's what gives Brandon Powell my possibly wave. Chris Rowland kept on the team possibly as that seventh receiver with plays designed for him as well. You don't keep a Chris Rowland on the team and just let him you know, return punts, return kicks. At the end of the day, you want to put him on a jet sweep every now and then? You want to, you know, use him like Sproles out of the backfield a little bit? Hey, I think he will be on this team. At the end of the day, now, Devin Gray's, the Jawan Greens, your McCleskeys of the world, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your service. But I want to touch on one point about a guy on the bubble. Back on the Treadwell really quick. Oh, Whatever. Oh, oh, oh. This, is why, this is why I get a little bit nervous because I think with Treadwell possibly on the bubble, it makes me nervous in terms of the size of our receivers from a run blocking standpoint, because as much as, hey, it's great to see a gauge out there, you know, uh, it's great to see, you know, like I said, your, your Christian Blake's maybe on the bubble. I think Christian Blake has a chance to make the team, you know, Zacchaeus, all of that. These are really smaller receivers, right? I expected Treadwell to be our de facto third or fourth receiver just because he was a bigger body who could block. So what I don't see is a lot of big receivers that can block outside of Julio Jones. Now, you don't want Julio Jones. Not true enough. Julio Jones is also our best. He's our best deep threat, possession receiver, all-around receiver, but he's also our best blocker as well. And I think you got to give Julio a a bang, you know, kind of like a, like a, just, you know, like a, a blocking mate, you know what I mean, that that is going to bang like Julio bangs, right? Now, here's one thing. We got to talk another elephant in the room, Muhammad Sanu. He yeah. got cut by the Patriots. A lot of people have been clamoring, do we bring back Agent 12? Now, one thing I'll say about this. For the simple reason that Treadwell is not necessarily now he's on the bubble, which is showing that he may not be showing that ability to be a glorified blocker. I think, hey, if we bring if one, I don't think we can really afford a Muhammad Sanu. But I think if a Muhammad Sanu takes a pay cut and wants to play for the Atlanta Falcons this season and hones in on wanting to be a blocker first, which is what he said he does relatively well, because we need blocking receivers as well to block for that big running back that we got. What I don't necessarily care too much for as of today. Is the fact that we got smaller receivers for a big running back. We need some big receivers blocking for that big running back just in case he springs to the outside. We need a guy that's going to hold that block on the outside. So it does make me a little bit nervous there. But, again, I think my, I want to see Mighty Mouse on this team, and I think the rest of the time for Pound ATL wants to see Mighty Mouse on this team. As a matter of fact, in the comments, you don't want to see Mighty Mouse on this team. Tell the rest of the time for Pound ATL yeah. nationwide, and I'm sure my guys will definitely get back to you on a response. 
Yeah, and I mean that Chris Rowland is definitely that uh, the cheater factor out of Kansas City. Um, that's definitely that factor. As people are starting to go to those little speedy, little scat receivers, kind of like my boy over there, the cheater over there for Kansas City. And Chris Rowland, uh, you, you you might be on this team. And now we we ain't really we ain't really diving into special teams. A lot of these guys might not make it at that position, but they will be a special team roster spot for them. I'm pretty sure of that. All right, let's get into this tight end uh, group, man. Let's let, let, I'll let your boy Hayden Hurst. What's going on, big dog? Loving how you looking at practice right now, man. Get ready for the game because you're going to have a big one against them, um, them Seattle Seahawks. I truly believe you're about to have a huge game against them. I'll let, let your boy. So Hayden Hurst brought back Luke Stalker, which, I mean, what, what, what what's happening? We got Jaden Graham, of course, them your three. Now, they got Jerry Pinkney on the bubble. Now, as of today, we cut Lee, the tight end Lee, the former XFL player, uh, uh, Kyrie Lee, uh, Kyrie Lee. We cut him today. Now, I don't know exactly what what Lee showed at practice to make him go, or is it Jerry Pinkney just showed some at practice to make him go? It's either well, one or the other ways. So, well, well, wait, go, well, go okay. ahead, Mike. So, so, so no, so so we touched on that a little bit. So he, I believe he um, he either got a uh, he either was injured. Or uh, I think he was on the COVID nineteen reserve list, something like right. that. So I, I know he took an injury settlement on the way out. Don't necessarily yeah, know the yeah. specifics, but um, looked like he was battling. But again, it was enough to kind of say, "All right, thank you for your time." You know, go about your day, right? So yeah. I still think we start off with Stocker, but you know what? I think what's interesting about the interchangeability of a pink knee and a Stockner, a Stocker, is that there may be some weeks where you see Luke Stocker being inactive and you see Pink get denied as opposed to Luke Stocker, because I do think you stash Pinkney away on the practice squad, definitely. And I don't think no another team will, 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 will scoop him up, but you stash him away on the practice squad and you use him interchangeably. Now, here's another thing. One of the best gadgets I think a team will use is having that expanded practice squad and have a player that's just killing the guys during the week and say, you know what, this week, you on the active roster. Come that's on right. up. That's and again, right. I, think, I think especially at the receiver position, don't get, listen, don't be surprised if a Jawan Green is stashed away on that practice squad and scores an 80 yard touchdown like he did in the first scrimmage uh, in an actual game. But again, you know, we're not touching, touching on the receivers. Who else you got, Big Jimbo? And, 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 and Jerry Pickney, if you are showing up and showing out at practice and you on that, and, I, and I, I hope that you really are still on this team. And I'm pretty sure, like Mike said, you're probably going to catch on to that practice squad and just stay ready, big dog. Be ready to go because I got a feeling they will give you that nod here sooner or later if Lou Stalker is not who we think he is. But Lou Stalker might be blocking just a little bit better than you. So, I mean, it is what it is, big dog. Kyrie Lee. Right. Adios, right. big dog. I hope you. I hope it all come out to you. I mean, they sent you off with a little money, too. All right, offensive line. Let's get to this offensive line. Main stage, okay? Locked in. Alex Mack, Jake Matthews, Kayla McGarry, Chris Lindstrom, Matt Hennessy. James Carpenter, and my guy, not only, the Justin McCray. Came over from the Cleveland Browns. I'm loving Justin McCray. Holler at me, big dog. Keep it going. Keep it moving. I hope you're going to be in that thing making some noise on that offensive line. Now, on the bubble, we got we got John uh, Witzel. Witzel, you should have been on the you should have been on the bubble last year. Holler at me. Whatever. He was on hey, he was on the bubble. He was on the bubble when he signed his contract. Like, <laughs> he should he should have been on the bubble, Mike. He should have never walked into the door. Anyway, right. Exactly. Anyway. We got um we got uh Harlow. Harlow is on there and, and Matt Gano. Okay, long shots over me. Mm. Uh, um Armstrong or uh, Justin Gooseberry. What's up, Gooseberry? I thought you hey Gooseberry, I want you to make the tea, baby. And then we got your boy out of Buffalo, uh, that, that, that man, Evan. Evan Case. Is, uh, Evan Case. Evan, I'm not finishing Evan, then. Evan Cesarzik. I think that's right. The, the, anyway. It's Cesarzik. Cesarzik. Whatever. We, hey, Eric. We, we did, did the best. Evan, Evan right. it been good. Okay. Going up that back up at Buffalo, but enjoy yourself. All right. So, on that bubble, Mike, I mean, is it, it, Harlow and, and Gano, I mean, are you surprised to see these guys on the bubble? I mean, this offensive line, I mean, good God, Matt Hennessy must have came in there. Justin McCray came off him and up in there and making some real noise on that offensive line. So, hey, shout out to Pound for Pound ATL fans. Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all know y'all know what I'm about to go to, right? Y'all remember the other week when uh Big Jimbo and uh Toby D, JR, they were all like, Oh, Matt Gano is the starting left guard for the Atlanta Falcons, and Matt Hennessy is going to have to work his way up. And we said, Okay, all right, guys. 
again, all training squad team is Matt Gano. Again, yeah. the guy that I think is going to make the all rookie team is Matt Hennessy because to touch on Matt Hennessy for a second, Jake Matthews and Alex Mack are basically saying the same thing about this guy. He picks up the offense quick. He knows all the calls already, and he's seldom out of position. That sounds exactly like what his college coach said. So what you are getting is exactly as expected. So for all of us, at, all of us that are Falcons fans, all of us that are people PATL fans, when we said, wow, how do we get a guy this, you know, all of these picks late? It just we got lucky. So he's going to be a guy that we are not going to have to worry about for maybe the next five to ten years. He's a guy that you're going to pay because you want to keep him, again, potentially, just like Lindstrom. You're going to want to pay those offensive guards over time because everything about them, and I, and I mean offensive guards, I mean our offensive guard, our, our center next year, but for the, all intents and purposes, I think our offensive line is just, like I said, I, I can't say enough good things about him. Love Justin McCray. I think he's going to fill in a lot of positions, can play right tackle, backup center, play some guard. Again, that's why when you see as good as the NFC South is around us, there's only one football. And we've had these teams where we've been stacked. We look great on paper and we fell short because there's no better thing than chemistry, execution, and everybody knowing what's expected of them as a team. Look at the, the team. Look at when the Falcons went to the Super Bowl. That was one of the greatest Falcons teams of all time. But think about that preseason. Nobody talked about them like, guys, this looks like this could be the greatest Falcons team of all time. We saw them go about their business. We saw Devondre Campbell continue to get better. We saw Deion Jones to continue to make plays. We, we heard D. Orlando Ledbetter. Shout out D. Orlando Ledbetter. I always say, hey, check out these two rookies. These guys are continue to get better and better. And guess what they did? They performed when the season came. So, again, like I said, now is the time for us to not worry about what the Bucks are doing, Panthers are doing. The Saints are doing definitely not worry about what the Saints are doing. Now is the time for us to just worry about what we have going on and what can the Falcons do in 2020 because all of the opportunity that we have in front of us because we have depth at a lot of key positions. But keep yes, it rolling. We do. All right, baby, it's time to get on this defensive side of the ball. Holla at your boy because this is the one that's going to carry us throughout the 2020 season. I really do believe this is the main group. We know that offense is just that offense, and now uh, Matt Ryan got some offensive linemen. Boy, he finna be an upright. Tar girl finna find some holes. It finna be a problem over there. But this defense, man. Come on now. Let's see what's going on. End of the season six and two. And boy, they were really starting to turn it on. And now we done added some 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 scrappy veterans to that to that side of the ball. And I am just excited to see what this this side of the ball gonna do. This is this is this is one of my babies right here. This is my baby right here. Let's start straight off with that defensive line. Because you gotta start off with that defensive line. It's just no ain't no question about it. Shout out to Dante Fowler Jr. What's happening? Tat McKinley, what's happening? You on there. Alan Bailey, you in there, baby. Alan Bailey, we ain't forgot about you, baby. You just keep your lunch pill in your hand and your hard hat on. You just keep coming to work and doing what you do. All right? Don't you go nowhere. Steven Means, what's up, baby? Holler at me now. Now, only, I, I mean, who we want to say is on the bubble. It's really not. Shouldn't be on there. But Charles Harris and, and, and Jacob, uh, 202, 202, 202 and 202 Mariner, and, and, and then Austin Edwards. I mean, Charles Harris is really not in that bubble conversation, I don't believe. He's going right. to be a rotational player, and I think i seen in the video today coming out of Atlanta Falcons camp that he was rotating with the ones today. So he's really not that guy to be worried about. I mean, some people were saying it was coming down to uh, Jacob T.M. And, and, I mean, Austin, Austin uh, Edwards out of Ferris State also was making a little noise during the camp, but he seems to be the one that's going to be left out of the fold. They want to carry right. six on that defensive line, so – Austin Edwards, you might be one of those practice squad guys. Most definitely, Jacob uh, Jacob TM, you probably going to be one of those practice squad guys and probably could get that nod at any time. You just stay ready because Tech got that shoulder. I think he's going to get that shoulder right, but just stay ready. So, Mike, I don't think – I mean, Austin Edwards, you going to the practice squad. Jacob TM, you probably going to the practice squad. That, in my eye, that's how I feel. But y'all stay ready. Give me your thoughts on that defensive line group, man, because – that defensive line group looked good. And for the people we got to cut, I think that's what it's going to be a hard decision for Dan Quinn, though. I think, I think, I think, listen, I, I go, I go glass half empty. Well, no, I go glass half full. Excuse me, not glass half empty. I go glass half full because Stephen Means is on the COVID 19 reserve list. Don't get me wrong, only two weeks. But again, you can't put Stephen Means on the active roster right now. I thought Stephen Means was playing well enough to, like I said, make this team. Kind of, kind of outright, right? But I think 
Stephen Stephen Means being out may potentially create an opening for an Austin Edwards for the standpoint that he's a rookie. Uh, Fair State, like I said, highly productive Division II player that, again, some guys, man, they just love football. And I think that he's a guy that, you know, what's crazy is that I remind him, he reminds me of, and not to say that he's this good or anything like that, but he reminds me of another scrappy Division II player. And, uh, you know, like if you look at Hugh Douglas, right, like a guy like that, right, you know, I go to, I go to Big Hugh because, you know, Division II guy, I mean, pass rush machine, good against the run, mean, love the game, may not have all of the, uh, you know, the YouTube videos and the, you know, Nike sponsorships and all that kind of stuff. But again, put his hand in the dirt, I think could make some plays and potentially be a special teams player. So if he makes the roster, wouldn't be surprised. But I think that uh, Jacob TM probably takes that last spot. And, um, you know, because I think he, we, we've seen what he can do. And yeah. I know that from day one, he gives us value as a run defender. So. Okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, Jacob TM, uh, keep keep working, baby. I, I, mm-hmm. I think you're gonna be all right. So I mean, the Atlanta Falcons want to carry six defensive ends. They want to carry six D tackles. So we got five locked in right now. Granted, Jerry, what's up, Big Dog, University of Clemson. I'm loving it, baby. One of the top three defensive tackles in the NFL. Holla at your boy. Laser okay, focus. We, I mean, my my God, man, big boy. Okay, we got we got Tyler Davidson, Marlon Davidson, John Kaminsky. Those are our locks right there. And Kaminsky is ready to get in the phone booth and scrap it out with somebody. Hey, 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 hold on. John Kaminsky, listen, we're not talking a lot about, listen, we're talking about the guys that are potentially on the bubble and stuff, but we've been hearing that the light switch is on. I've been, I like what I've been hearing for you uh, in the interviews <laughs> and stuff, and I think with Marlon Davidson with a knee strain, we've been touching on you a lot of the, the, probably the last four or five episodes, and I expect for you to make your presence known. I said by game four, but I think with the, injury, the, the knee injury to Marlon Davidson, I think that don't be surprised. And again, this is just completely a hunch. If John Kaminsky, I, I think there's a good chance that he gets a sack against Russell Wilson. I think there, if there's one of the a, a person that you may not think of that could get a sack against Russell Wilson, it's John Kaminsky. But again, I don't want to compare him to Brooks Reed for various reasons. But I think that if you look at a guy that, you know, if you look at when Brooks Reed was bulked up playing a little bit on that defensive line, de- defensive end, I think that. If at worst, I can consider him to uh, be a Brooks Reed depth signing. He's another guy that we're going to have to watch. And Grady Jarrett has been saying the same thing. His light switch is on. So I like defensive tackles with the light switch on that have a lot of potential as well. And and and, and like I said, uh, you know, definitely have, have some production in the league as well, too. So yeah, hey, and, we, we, we roll. And John Kaminsky said he want to play about 290. 295 he's gonna play he want to play he's gonna play inside and out that's gonna be a beautiful thing now who john Kaminsky remind me of is i live by here in colorado he remind me of a dairy wolf type of defensive tackle defensive end and, and I, I every time i think about dairy wolf i think about john Kaminsky. i think he can be that dairy wolf type of defensive lineman for the atlanta falcon this year and i cannot wait to see Kaminsky get out there and get ready to go off now i'm not he want a new undrafted defensive tackle uh, and, and, and undrafted free agent and, 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 and Latou uh, services. Thank you for your services. I really appreciate it. But we're going to have to go ride out into 2020 just a little bit without you. Now, Deidre, tonight. Now, where do you fit in in this group? Now, I understand uh, Marlon Davidson got that knee, uh, what got that, what, what he got, Mike, that sprain. Yeah, knee strain. Knee strain. Knee strain. So, I mean, Deidre, tonight. What what we going to do, Deidre? What, what's up, man? I need to know something, baby. I need to know if you ain't on back of a milk card. I need to know what's actually going on with you, didn't you not? You probably gonna make this team. They don't owe you that much. You really cheat right now. You ain't going towards the salary cap too bad. But we drafted you and we need some production out you. We need you to be we need you to be around for 2020. But I, I I'm sensing that you might be on that bubble, man. You might be there. I mean, I mean, if Jacob as Jacob TM can move down in there, they might have to put him in that slot. But I mean, like the Atlanta Falcons want to carry six defense tackles. So, defense or not, it's going to be up to you. I mean, we don't have our last scrimmage, so I don't really know. It's kind of going to be up to the coach's discretion on whether they want to keep you or not or what they're going to do with you. You cannot be on the practice squad, defense or not. It is what it is. So, quick thoughts on defense or not real quick, Mike. What you think, man? Because we almost, we, we ain't almost left them out. We say the best for last. I mean, defense or not had, is, like I said, he is the best defensive tackle that's on the bubble. I just think it's a mind thing for Deidre Sinat because, again, who was one of the first guys that we did an episode about? Deidre Sinat. We right. said we don't want Deidre Sinat to be Deidre and forgot. 
We are seeing more Deidre forgotten than Deidre Shanat. I'm just saying. Not trying to rhyme on his last name, but ultimately, you see the potential. You see the him putting the work in. Everybody has said that he don't. He's been working out harder than ever. Greatest offseason ever. Like that is the most overused term in the NFL. Oh, he's had the greatest offseason yeah, ever. That, that, he's yeah. had the that's that's hyping guys up because as you see, having the greatest offseason ever sometimes doesn't necessarily translate on the field, right? But I think that um, I think he has not impressed Tosh McCoy because think about it like this: this is probably what second, third defensive line coach that he's had, right? And they're all saying the same thing. You know, and it's like Dan Quinn is keeping the guy around. We had tried to trade for him, anything like that, because the, the question is, why is he inactive? But the problem with that is, I think a Jacob TM takes his snaps as well, because Jacob TM is already he already knows what to do as a run defender and potentially some pass rush ability. And here's another thing. Listen, you talk about Solosi Latu. Do not forget about Solosi Latu as well as a practice squad player who could I creep like up too. And, and get some of those. Get some of those game reps because here's the thing. Look at it like this. Slow to that too. 6'1, 340, 350. Any given week, if we need a run plugger that's just a big guy, command a double team. I like a 6'1, 350, 340, 350 guy to match that fast and physical mantra with all the guys around him. That puts Grady, give Grady the ability to play a little, little big defensive end and use him in different ways as well. Because to be honest with you, Grady is good enough that he can play any position in the defensive line. Just okay. like the only person you can compare him to in that same breath is Aaron Donald. You know, like I said, those small athletic guys that are just just wreck freaking heaven. But yeah, so let's not sleep on the slow slide too as well, too. Town. And I like that too. I like that. We 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 watched some film on him. I think he got a good upside. Press score wouldn't be bad for you lot too. Uh, okay. Linebacker group, Deion Jones. We got Foye, Foye Olakun. I'm a Kale Walker, Leroy Reynolds, eat dog, eat what's happening, baby. On our bubble right now, we're thinking about this because they're going to carry six linebackers. Now, I don't know if Edmund Robinson is out there doing his thing, but D1 Buchanan is also right there. And uh, 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 Ray Wilborn, it's been nice knowing you, man. I hope another team pick you up. But Ray Wilborn, I think you uh, hit the dough like you never did before. All right, Edmund Robinson and D1 Buchanan. I think Edmund Robinson, the former XFL uh, linebacker, maybe he's been having a good – I mean, maybe he's been having a good count. Maybe he had a good count. Maybe he showed up in that last scrimmage. But D1 be kind of, I don't think you're going anywhere. I don't think, I think it might be that last trip for Edmund Robinson. Special team Edmund Robinson, possibility, yes. I think you're going to be a good special team player for no doubt about it. Go down there and cover those points and those kickoffs. So give me your thoughts on that linebacker group, Big Mike. I think, um, I think you know, I, I look at the linebacker group and I think that Michael Walker being what we drafted him to be as, as important. I think this is, a, you know what? This is a really good time to touch on the rookies that we know that are showing us for the team because we kind of, you know, at that cut level. I think Michael Walker coming in looking like a linebacker who, again, you know, what's funny is they they compare a lot of his game actually to Deion Jones. Now, different linebackers, different body types. Like I said, it's high praise to say that you're being compared to Deion Jones. But I think if you look at being a linebacker that understands everything that they're asking him to do, being a Jeff Albright, Jeff Albright. I said Jeff Albert, like, you know what? I like this guy from Fresno State. I like the I like the way he plays. And again, he's made let's not let's let's not act like Michael Walker snuck up on college football. He made a lot of plays. Look at him, look at a game where Fresno State played USC last year. He was all over the field. He made his yeah. presence known everywhere. And I and I think they either beat USC or they made or it was a very close game, right? Yeah. So um linebacker position, like I said, I mean Edmund Robinson, you know, those guys. Um, like I said, it's the Leroy Reynolds show. It's the Foy, 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 uh, Alucan show. It's, uh, Deion Jones. Deion Buchanan. Now, Deion Buchanan on the bubble. I'm not going to read too much into that because I think that, um, I think that you, we're going to need his versatility at some point. If at worst, if he's not making plays for us, uh, for the matchup, uh, you know, for, for, for some matchup thing. Cause here's the thing. Actually, let's, let's touch on Deion Buchanan for a second. Cause I think what we'll see is, is you'll see some guys that are safeties get linebacker snaps as well. Right, right. Keanu Neal, I think, will get linebacker snaps as well. But let us not forget about somebody. Let's talk about another rookie real quick. It's like, you know, hey, we can talk about safeties for a second, but I'm going to talk about him for two positions because what I didn't realize until I looked at his measurables was that there's actually another safety that we have who can get some linebacker snaps, and I believe it's Jalen Hawkins. What I didn't realize was Jalen Hawkins is 6'2", 210 pounds. Big boy. And big guy. Big guy there at strong safety that is a ball hog. And I think if we're ever in situations where we need Deion Jones to be, you know, a single high linebacker covering 
you know, in the dime, stuff like that. Don't be surprised if a Jalen Hawkins, you know, can can slide in and be that extra uh, just inside and you know, do some blitz and do some blitz from the outside cover. Like I said, where we will make our where we, I think, are differentiators this year, clearly are in our matchup problems. You know what I mean? And, and mat defensive matchup problems because DeMonte Casey noted on it. The defense is getting more interceptions this year. So that to me tells me that we have more of those guys who we got nervous about the J.J. Wilcox is the all of those guys that got hurt. It seems to me that they have the depth to do a lot of different things. And I'm going to tell you something. A defense that has safety depth is very, very scary. Yeah, it so is very tough, very tough in the NFL to have quality safety depth. And I would say if you look back at the Falcons, this is the best safety depth that we had in maybe 10 or 15 years at a minimum. So, But, again, we're talking about linebackers, but some of those safeties – We'll take some linebackers now. And, and I agree with you, Mike, because they got the size, they got the speed, and they just, I mean, fast and physical. That Dan That's Queen. Right. All right? Let's, right. Let's, let's move on to these cornerbacks. My favorite group. I couldn't wait to get here. Holla at me, baby. The secondary is in the house, okay? Dirty birds. Ain't no, no, don't call us no no fly zone. We ain't with that. We ain't no no fly zone. We our own team. We the dirty birds, and the secondary is ready to go. AJ Terrell locked in. Uh, Denard, locked in. Isaiah Oliver, locked in. Kenneth Sheffield, you're locked in. Bleedy Ray Wilson. That's Toby D guy. You're locked in, Bleedy Ray. I like your. Uh, I like that interview you did the other day, too. I like the way you just want to get better, man. I love it, Bleedy Ray, man. Keep it up, big dog. Now, Jordan Miller, you on that bubble, big dog. I don't know. I ain't really heard nothing about you. Ain't nothing coming out of the camp about you. You on that bubble. We're going to get back to you. All right, Josh Hawkins, Derek Abram. Tyler Hall. I'm really surprised Tyler Hall is right there bubbling around. I'm kind of, nah, I ain't heard nothing really. Maybe he didn't get the snaps he needed to get. Maybe that's that player that needed some preseason games. I'll get to that preseason thing later. later. But okay, Mike, Jordan Miller. I mean, they want to carry six cornerbacks. Five slots are already locked in, as I just said. Who's your guy on that bubble? I, I think Jordan Miller, this might be it, big dog. This might be your last go round. But give me your take on that cornerback group, big Mike. What's happening? Well, I think uh, it doesn't really help Jordan Miller being a guy on the bubble anyway that has a no. four-game suspension. It's like when you start the season with a four-game suspension, you're already – things are already working against you, right? So that's one negative going against this guy. But one thing that I think that um, we haven't thought about is this is actually one position where I believe an undrafted guy that we may not be thinking about could potentially steal that last spot. And it's more of a hunch because I hadn't heard a lot about him in a negative way. Because let's be honest with you. Let's talk undrafted free uh, cornerbacks real quick. Roy Justin Ferris was your guy. Boy, they looked nope, at Roy Justin God. Ferris and said, hey, two practices. We've seen enough, Roy Justin. We'll send you back to Hawaii, right? But the guy they kept was Delrick, was Delrick Adams, right? Now, right. don't be surprised if because Jordan Miller being on that bubble kind of, hey, four-game suspension, let's just be done with this guy. I really think you have a longer, lankier, better technique corner in Derek Abrams who could potentially take that last spot as an undrafted free agent. Again, I think if there's a, any undrafted free agent that can, that can just kind of sneak in and get that last spot that we haven't heard anything negative about, who's been productive in college, who really should have been drafted in the fifth or sixth round, it's Delrick Adams, right? Mm -hmm. So I think um, it'll be important to kind of see what happens at that cornerback position. Bleedy Ray could take it. Like I said, Josh Hawkins came from the XFL. He's got talent. But ultimately – I'm one of those guys that I want to get the most talented corner, even if he's untapped potential. I just want to get him out there and let him battle. And I think Derek Delrick Adams is a guy that, like I said, could could, uh, could battle his way onto that uh, to that active roster, or at least be one of those practice squad guys who you may see just come in on special teams, make a play, you know, player two there. So you know, again. Hey, hey, sec hey, Atlanta Falcons secondary. Just know I got my eye on you, and I'm watching every move. I'm watching regame. I'm doing film session. I'm doing all that. I cannot wait nine days away. Is it on and popping? Uh, Isaiah Oliver, I'm gonna need for you to go ahead and turn that corner this year, big dog. I really need that. But we got so much dip in this secondary at this at this cornerback position. If you don't, we got somebody that can come in and probably help help turn that corner for that secondary. All right, let's get to these safeties, man. All right, Ricardo Allen, how at me, baby. Keanu O'Neill, welcome back, big dog. Good to see you on the field. Good to see you made it through camp. And let's get it, man. Let, let's let's really get it, Keanu Neal. Mr. Boom himself. Okay, DeMonte KG, what's happening? Turnover Kane right there. Turnover Kane. Okay, Neesman. What's up, Neesman? What's up, baby? You are in the building. What's up, Sherrod Neesman? Jalen Hawkins, who Mike kind of alluded earlier in this show. 
that might be getting a little 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 sleety slide on in there get a little middle linebacker which i mean he got the size he got the speed he's a turnover ball hog at the university of cal he probably could do that but right now we got him lazy as a safety we want to carry five seconds safeties for that line falcon okay who's on the bubble jj wilcox jamal carter and chris cooper you right down the bubble this room is also loaded that secondary as a whole all the way around is loaded potential is there the dog, the speed, <coughs> just to be the best secondary, just wanting to be the best secondary in the NFL is death. All right. Mm -hmm. Chris Cooper, I probably think you might need to hit the road. I probably think you're going to hit the road, you and Jamal Carter. Now, give me your thoughts on this safety position with J.J. Wilcox. Like, give me your thoughts on this safety, this safety group, Big Mike. Well, I mean, I think that, um, you know, you look at Wilcox, you look at, um, you know, Carter, you look at uh, Cooper, all those guys. Listen, all those guys have started NFL games before. The only guy who hasn't started NFL games is Jalen Hawkins, right? But I still think because, you know, the, hey, let's be honest. Now, let me tell you something. One of the stories that's telling in, in training camp is you really only mic up a rookie that you think has a chance to play. Yep. They mic up Jalen Hawkins. They don't say a lot about him, but they mic him up. It's almost like they don't, wanna, they don't want people to know how to use him. So I still think, again, this is one of the best drafts that we've had in recent memory that we'll look back on where we will – Kind of get off Dimitrov's back from a – excuse me. We'll kind of get off uh, Rich McKay. Shout out to the real draft master, Rich McKay. For this amazing draft. Thank you, Rich. Thank you for uh, getting off the boat and not being on a yacht in Flowery Branch and actually being in the office and oh, – excuse me, virtually being like, no, nah, I got it. Uh, I want that guy. So, um, again, the safety position, man, like I said, you got to go with the guy you drafted in the fourth round because he hasn't done anything to hurt himself. I think J.J. Wilcox – Coming back from an ACL, if he's on the bubble, that lets me know that the safety depth is exactly what we think it is. Yep. Deep. And if Cooper or Carter are there and they beat him out, and that means they have provided an element that we need that can be used that will bear fruit. Because when you're that deep, you can be very picky about what you're looking for. In a yes, safety. sir. You, you may be looking for like, hey, you know what? No, I just want a safety that can run blitz a little bit more, man. We need to run blitz more. You know, excuse me, excuse me. We don't mean run blitz. You know, just pass. You know, like like I said, just versatile, man. Just use them at everything. You know, like I said, we just want to put them put them on a blitz every chance we get. So it's just nuances. It's the little thing. It's the details. So safety position, I go with JJ Wilcox possibly being a tough cut, but maybe getting picked up somewhere else in a feel good story. But again, um, with the depth we got, I would be surprised what direction we go. You know what you think? Though? I mean, hold on, who you who you think? Who you think they go with? Is there anything for you that separates a Cooper, a Carter, a Wilcox, any of them guys? You know what I mean? I mean, with that with that safety room being so deep, like you said, they can be picky as they want to be. They can do it however they want to do it. They can go in the direction, any avenue they want to go down. Red light, green light, stop sign, however they want to do it, they can do it. And I, I mean, JK, J, JJ Wilcox, I mean, like you said, coming off that injury, maybe they're going to see some things that might not be up to par. But I, I think he's probably going to get that slot. I think it's going to be him. Not Jamal Carter or Chris Cooper. Now, like you said, these guys don't play in the NFL. These guys don't have their chance. So, I mean, if anything, it's just more of a more depth situation with that safety group. So it's really up to the coach's discretion right now. That safety coach is going to have to pick between between these three guys that's on the bubble. So I think it's JJ Wilcox. I think that's who it's going to be. Mm. Here we go. On to the special team. Then they only the only three things we got the kick of the young Hoku, you start. I like Sterling, you our punter, and Josh Harris, you our long snapper. It is what it is, and that's our – and that's – that's our thoughts on the people that might be cut, final cuts, the roster, 53-man roster that need to be bust down from 80. Some cuts are coming. Get ready for that wave because it's going to be coming, and it's going to be coming fast. And it's going to be – some people going to be moving over to special teams. Some people going to move to that practice squad. But that's our pound for pound ATL thoughts on this roster, this 53-man roster, who could be cut and who, who might still be on the team. Now – if you have comments and you want to you let us know down below who you think still going to be on this team, probably not going to be cut. Me and Mike got something wrong. Hit it down below and let us know, man. And we will get back to you and let you know what we think. But we already gave y'all our thoughts on who's going to make this team and who's going to be on that on that roster come here next Sunday against the Seattle Seahawks. All right, Big Mike, man. That's been a great show, man. Let's get on to these closing thoughts really fast and let's get up out of here, Big Dog. Y'all like, share, and subscribe. This is Pound Pound ATA. You can catch me and Mike on here every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. We will be off up in your tube, baby. Shout out to JR. Shout out to Toby D. All right, baby. Let's get into this closing thoughts. It's going to be mine first because I'm going to be real fast because I put my mind, I put my thoughts out on this before. 
I'm going to get on these non-preseason games. I really think with me and Mike, how me and Mike just went over this roster, these cuts and stuff, I really do believe that we're going to miss out on somebody that we, we should have kept. No preseason games, judging scrimmages and practices as games is really not giving me that picture. It's really not giving me that live look that I want. It's really not letting me see my players against another player, a, a player that ain't been going against this whole offseason. You understand what I'm saying? This whole camp. So if we miss out on somebody, I think it's going to be we ain't have no preseason game. I, I Preseason game might not mean nothing to y'all, but it means a lot to me for a former football player. You love live action. A jamboree was good before before you played in the game. Colleges play uh, D2 schools and, and D1 AA schools before they get into their main schedule. It helped you judge your team and who you should keep and who you should not keep. That one play in the preseason games could have kept a Chris Cooper. But we don't. We would. We would never know because he keep going up against the same people in practice day in and day out. They know his weaknesses, and they gonna get him every time. But in a real live game situation, he could have made that play against another team and, and and gave you that 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 you know gave Dan Quinn that nod to keep it. So with my closing thoughts, I'm just really hoping this 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 non preseason COVID nineteen thing don't damper us missing a really good player that's gonna go on and be good for somebody else. And I really hope that we can. If they do, I, I, I mean, I hope we put them on the practice squad, put them on a the special team, and keep our eye on them because I don't want no no deflections going on here. And that's my closing thoughts on not having no preseason games. Big Mike, it's on you, big dog. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to be inspirational this week, man, because um, for years we talk fast and physical, and we talk about what it means to be fast and physical for the Atlanta Falcons. But to me, I go into the next level of, of fast and physical, brotherhood, all of that, and that is leadership because – this is the most well-led Falcons team that I've seen. And I think with the combination of COVID, virtual meetings, I think the leaders led. I think receivers, if I'm an undrafted free agent, every time Julio Jones gets on a Zoom call and talks, I'm listening. I, I march to the beat of what Julio Jones talks about on these Zoom calls. I think having good leaders, having people that you can follow, first and foremost, makes you hungry when you come into training camp. So this is a yeah, very sure. well-led team. Now, one of the greatest things I heard today about leadership happened today in the form of Mr. Ricardo Allen in my closing thoughts. And that is Dan Quinn said, hey, man, let me ask y'all a question. He asked the team a question. It's a freaking great story. He said, hey, if Ricardo Allen has helped you or impacted you in some way, raise your hand. The entire room raised their hand. Oh, man. That's what you call omnipresence. Let me tell you something, right? Having a free safety that it might not be the best player, might not be the this or that. But that's the leader. And again, I told you guys, every time Ricardo Allen gets hurt, we lose that leadership. We lose that alignment. We lose that structure that it takes to be a championship team. Listen, win, lose, or draw. Don't let Leonard Fournette be in the division. Don't let Tom Brady. Don't let nah. Teddy Bridgewater, Christian McCaffrey, Drew Brees. I saw something today that the Saints going all out about clowning. Football is played on the field. And when you're a well-led team, you know what the mission is. You're executing. You got a good defensive coordinator who's comfortable with his team. You got an offensive coordinator that can throw various different offenses at you. You got a head coach that all he want to do is let people know that he is a, he is worth keeping. And you got a front office that understand that everything is on the line this year. So I tell you this, and I leave you with this. When your team is well led, relax, chill out. We're good this week. You know what I mean? We're going to be good this season. So we're getting closer, guys. So it's about time we huddle on in to get closer. As Black and Red Dirty Birds fans, as Pound for Pound ATL Nation, y'all have been down with us. We down with y'all. For y'all know what we're here for. All to watch that game and root for our Dirty Bird. It's your boy Mike Dub. Then my closing thoughts. And I love talking to y'all every week. Pound for Pound ATL. Yeah, Talk. so we, well, hey, we love giving y'all this stuff because we love talking about the Atlanta Falcons simply because we love that team. And all we want to do as Atlanta, Atlanta Falcon fans, Atlanta Falcon co content creators, all this stuff on Twitter, Atlanta Falcon fan. All we want is a Super Bowl. That's what all of us got in common, a Super Bowl. Shout out Ricardo Allen. Keep up that good work because leadership is, is a tangible just that some people just don't have. Hey, man, it's almost game time, baby. Get your popcorn ready. This is Pound for Pound ATL. I'm your boy Jimbo Dean, a.k.a. Jimbo Slice, a.k.a. Jimmy Obama. And you can call me any one of those you want, but please don't call me no damn New Orleans Saints fan. And we are off up in the building. Catch me and Mike every Saturday on Pound for Pound ATL, giving that good Atlanta Falcon stuff. Every Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, big dog. We ain't going nowhere. Catch me on Twitter, at Jimmy Obama. That's at Jimmy Obama. Hit me up. Any thoughts? 
Tell me about the show. Tell me how I did. Let me know, baby, because we are here. Shout out to Toby D. Shout out to JR. Powerfine ATL, baby. We love y'all. Keep tuning in. Keep sharing, subscribing. We love it. Big Mike, close that tune in before we get up out of here, big dog. It's the only hey, pop. Hey, man. Big Mike Dub, man. Underscore. Uh, Mike, M I K E underscore D U B. Follow me on Twitter, man. I follow back. Y'all been showing love. Keep showing love. Again, man. It's all love. And uh, Seahawks. Seahawks. Y'all, y'all, y'all next up on the menu. So we coming for you. We Rise coming up, for you, big dog. Rise hey, up. Man. Hey, Here's man, we, hey, yes, we'll sir. catch y'all next week, baby. Pound Pound ATL's in the building. Adios.